Uh, so I think uh, on the description uh, of this talk of UDD, I, um, I pasted two links uh, for talks. Did anyone uh, try to see it or was on the Odessa, in Odessa meeting? Uh, so that's, that's your problem. <laughs> uh, so ju ju just check it uh, later. So what I was saying there, like this is, I had two, sli two slides there, this and this, and I was talking all the time about the conferences I was. I was, uh, let's say, 11 conferences that year when I was saying it. Uh, now it's like, let's say, three more conferences. And for most of these conferences, I just mentioned some interesting story, what's, uh, what's fun and mostly what's wrong about what's um, propagated programmers. Um, oh, this is the, the last slide of my, of my talk. So I said, uh, um, for these years, we are going from the back end to front end. You remember, like 2010, it was uh, uh, which from jQuery to Backbone, let's say maybe 2012, I don't remember. And then it was Angular and things were, uh, now it's React and something. So we are just going more and more front end and our applications are richer on front end. So a natural thing is like everything will be on front end at some point and it's a uh, right term for it, it's serverless. But I explained how the term was stolen by Amazon and uh, last year because it was conferences they were stalling it and uh, so we might not occur there uh, but I'm already there I, I made some prototypes I can write application maybe I should add something let's go to my new uh, okay so uh, that's cool because I made this slide uh, work Uh, I made this slide a uh, year and a half ago for my first presentation in Ukraine in Lviv uh, on Ruby meeting, which is called Korak. Awesome. <clears throat> uh, so I didn't need to create new slides. Um, so I, uh, for, uh, for a while I was thinking about, like, we have so many methodologies, uh, principles we follow, and uh, we are touched on, on uh, events, like how to do TD, how to, how to do and uh, I think it's wrong, uh, just because uh, the basic thing of programming is understand what, what we are uh, doing. And uh, if we have some universal uh, rules, uh, they can't be true. Uh, there, there is no universal tr truths in uh, programming. Uh, uh, let's say on the NDC Oslo conference, there was a nice talk about architecture and the guy was saying the uh, there is only one answer for any question when somebody asks you as an architect what you should answer and it's always one answer this is another methodology uh, it depends this is the answer so whatever is the question in programming the answer is it depends so considering that we can't have methodologies which uh, which makes our programming simple and oh we just do first step second step third step and you are safe that is just that's not true so um, uh, so we have uh, the functional programming part here I think I will be talking you you will be listening and then hopefully you you will be improved somehow this is the functional part I think everyone understands the notation and this is your choice if you will be a new audience or you will be just mutated. That's your choice. Uh, and also, uh, if, uh, if you like my talk, I would like to trade you. Like, I, I give some. We'll see. Uh, if, you, uh, if you will appreciate this talk, let's make a huge. Uh, uh, how, is it? how is it called? Applause, right? I, I need some support. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> what I'd like to say. Okay, I have, oh, I would like to have whiteboard for that. So, um, there are, there are uh, some tendencies in uh, our industry. So, back then when, uh, let's say, when race became fancy, uh, we've been all full stack 
uh, developers, what we were called race developers, Ruby race developers. And it, then it changed, uh, so uh, there are front-end developers and back-end developers, and they can make money on their own, and they do, do separate things. But some of us stay just uh, doing both things, so now we are full-stack developers. And uh, I think we can go also deeper, like to understand not only the application part, algorithms, but also networks, uh, hardware things, uh, operating system things, uh, file system things. So that's the general knowledge, and it's really useful. And uh, I claim when you go general, instead of uh, go uh, specialized, you are just better. And uh, how to prove it? I have no chart. I, I, maybe I should make a chart for it. So uh, whenever you have some subject and you specialize, you have some piece of knowledge. Um, I know what. So uh, this is uh, time, uh, power, how much powerful you are. So uh, each time you specialize and you add a piece of knowledge to one uh, subject, you just add. And then you add a piece of knowledge to another subject, generalizing at this point. You are adding to another column, and with columns you have uh, multiplying. I don't know if you, if you follow me. Uh, but th this uh, specializing just adds uh, your, uh, some unit to your power. But when you go another discipline, you multiply because you can combine your knowledge from the first discipline with the second discipline. And you are many times powerful, not one unit powerful. So uh, this makes, uh, this is time, this is power. So if you, if you are going, let's say, to be a front-end and you learn only one thing, then th this power chart will be a logarithmic because you will quickly be, uh, became useful in this uh, discipline. But then the way you can improve is limited. And if you are going general and you learn everything, it takes you more time, but then you are super powerful. So this, this chart would be just a uh, parable, a part of parable. That's obvious if you learn mathematics. Some um, um, IT studies or math studies, just, uh, I just don't, uh, don't remember, don't recall the word. Uh, so, um, so this way, uh, you are in disciplinary developer, you learn everything, it takes time, it's hard, but it's possible. And on the other side, what, what's promoted heavily right now, uh, it's an interdisciplinary teams, like, oh, this was hard task, we, we um, hired an interdisciplinary uh, team for that, so it would be not possible without it. And uh, um, if you think about it, you have many different minds and then, then occurs some communication, uh, which is uh, costful, it has costs, and it's not efficient, uh, paralyz parallelization cost. And we have AMDA law for parallelization cost. It applies to uh, humans and to computers also. Uh, when you go some uh, programming in many threads, then you have a limited way of uh, improving performance, let's say, like the... And you have this parallel por portion. It's also, this is also a thing which changes when you are interdisciplinary developer or specialized. If you are specialized, your por portion you can parallelize, it's only your portion. And if you are full stack, you can parallelize whole feature implementation. Um, so just uh, look at it later. Makes a lot of sense. Uh, and also, I'd like to say, I'm a little bit philosopher, that's why. Uh, the human language is perfect and imperfect at, at the same, same time. So we, you have this uh, 
interdisciplinary team and they need to communicate. And uh, whenever you communicate, you use protocol and it's a language protocol. Perfect, because we don't have a protocol which is defined. It's not defined, but we still... And uh, uh, this communication is not perfect, because I'm saying one thing and I mean something, but you understand that. That's how it works. So we have interdisciplinary team and it occurs this problem all the time, because they don't know what you meant. They just assume. So the, the thing how it works, longer you, you speak, you just come closer to the understanding, like somehow you, you think you are on the same page. It might not be true. That, that's, that's amazing. Like We don't have a protocol, but we... Uh, so this is really hard. How many of you uh, uh, are going into functional programming right now? Not so many. And we, you'd like to go there? That's good. <laughs> Not so many. Uh, so uh, on these conferences, that is really uh, I see how how it's uh, forced uh, because I go there like for seven years, like many conferences. There. And then uh, the best type of conferences are Ruby conferences. It's full of hackers. People are really inspiring. They work, work together. They share knowledge. And uh, at these uh, conferences, at some point, uh, was uh, appear, uh, started appearing functional programming in many different names. And f at the beginning, nobody understood what the fuck. We have nice Ruby. Everyone loved Ruby five, seven years ago. And uh, it was just a misunderstanding. They were not appreciated. And, uh, but still, it's like growing, growing, and from each side, we are uh, attacked by the functional programming technologies. That they are somehow better. Uh, but uh, that, you ruined my question because I wanted to ask: You do functional programming? Who who does it? Yeah. So, do you feel the same power? You, you can do everything in functional programming because when you do Ruby, you can do anything, right? Make take some time, but it's whatever is the task, you will do it. You feel the same power with functional programming? Yes. Yes. Because it's more efficient and complex. Some concepts that uh, be less manageable. Okay, okay. So, so, so uh, I guess uh, functional programming is just a subset of object oriented programming. Because we have only functions. Yeah, yeah, that's the one, one more thing I hate. Okay, let, <laughs> let's follow. Uh, so, the understanding, I will just explain some things which are issues. Uh, who of you can uh, and tell what's race issues? Like the things which are wrong in our race application, in the race framework. Yeah, tell me. Active record. <laughs> and, and everything related to it. It's the pattern, uh, the implementation, and yeah, the implementation again. It's okay. 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 Something, something, something more. What? What? Automatic loading of classes. Automatic loading of classes. Okay. Okay. More. Active stuff. Support? Overall. Overall. Uh, oh. oh. Active support overall. Overall, yeah. Um, because it uh, extends for objects, uh, they are trying to avoid it in the latest versions of Rails. But, uh, uh, you know, 
Ivan Nemichenko, one of uh, GitLab mentors, uh, released uh, some uh, presentation like uh, Rail Spain or something like that. And, uh, mm -hmm. So, 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 uh, so he collected uh, just uh, ten uh, common uh, Rail Spains, mm -hmm. and uh, Rails introduced so much uh, very common things uh, that even maths. Uh, haven't passed the test of the difference of Ruby and Rails methods. Yeah, yeah. Okay, so let's uh, let's. I, I will tell you what I think is wrong. Like I I I, do, I didn't think much about it. It's uh, just uh, structure is one thing. Uh, we are just uh, splitting our application into uh, layers. They are just our concepts for us, for developer, how to grasp a feature we are implementing. But then all, all the feature is uh, spread uh, all around different directories and it doesn't make sense at all. There's no um, value from that. You don't receive any value you spit, oh, these are controllers, these are models, these are something. You can say it by name and you do it uh, something controller, something model. And then you keep it in one place, uh, and it's the feature place. Then when you don't need that feature, you just delete it, and it's fine. And in race application, it becomes an uh, old race application, and you can delete shit of shit amount of uh, files, and it works the same, because the, the, these files are not used anymore, because someone uh, forgot to go assets, images, let's call it broken. If, if it still works, or uh, like it, you, you need to touch many things and you should just, okay, I don't need this feature, and it, that's fine. So the structure is wrong. The second thing is monolith. Uh, so the, there was a discussion like three, four years ago on these conferences, like services, monolith or microservices, and they were proposing the other, other structure of your application who uh, became a microservices uh, programmer. And it's bullshit because you don't need to change anything, you just need to change how your application is executed. So it executed as a microservices, not as a monolith. So it doesn't load uh, the active support, active record models, uh, use assets, uh, things into, into your uh, controller part, your controller runs itself and it has only these uh, things which it needs, so uh, you can uh, scale only one controller because it's most, you, uh, this thing is most used in your application and uh, you can scale it ind independently, it's super fast and it's not like you have five workers and then your server is done and full uh, and mostly uh, in memory it's unused because uh, you need to scale it because one controller is, needs more power but you scale everything. That's the problem. Uh, but you, you, the, it doesn't uh, imply that you should write anything uh, else differently. It just imply on race start, you should start many microservices, which are probably under your controllers. So you don't write it much different way, but, but when it, this discussion occurred, we were confused because they were starting to attach many new concepts to that discussion, so we were conf confused. Of that. And that's the only thing is different is just how it's executed. You don't need to run a new JIT repository for each microservice. And it's not modern because we were waiting for the last seven years for WebSockets, or six years for WebSockets, and now JS, they had it, and they have a lot of technology for that. And in Rails 5, we have some shit channels technology, which attacks, and there is a lot of things which are just not modern. It was perfect 10 years ago, it was complete, that's why Rays were good, because they were complete. They, it was everything we needed. But it's not modern anymore. Uh, but I would not say these are Ruby issues. Just race issues. And then how many of you do front-end things? Because it's like everything about React is wrong, so I, I, I don't know, I have, I have audience to explain things about what's wrong in React. Do you do, you do front-end? Yes. Yes, yes, enough to, enough to talk. Awesome. So, uh, I, 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 thought, I told already some things in Odessa. I was, then I was driven by these conferences and I was saying what 
Now I have just uh, React main, main side and I just say the features. So the speed of virtual DOM. So they introduced React and they claimed they are the fastest because of virtual DOM and they were the slowest at the same time. So wrong to do. Just, just liars. Uh, they were slower than Backbone, so slower than Angular. Still, they were advertised. Uh, we are so fast because of Virtual DOM. And you are, if you are thinking about Virtual DOM, it doesn't make sense because you have a structure and you make the same kind of structure, but again, where is the efficiency in it? I have no idea. Uh, they just wanted to uh, somehow batch re-rendering. So they, they, I, I heard the story how how they created it. It was like this way. It was super inefficient. Uh, what they did, so someone uh, applied virtual DOM and it was uh, quicker so they could uh, announce they have new fancy technology, but it still was the slowest back then. And there was a lot of uh, developers, oh, virtual DOM is so fast, so we, oh, wh what the fuck is this? I will implement my own virtual DOM. And they implemented and it was much faster than, uh, than the re uh, race one, but it's still, it, it, just wrong. We have DOM, we don't need virtual DOM. So whatever will be a new um, W3C standard, they need to apply it to React, or otherwise you can't use it. So the library will grow, or you can't just do something. And uh, it, it, it must be slower. It must be slower. So I will show it later. Fiber is the new, new thing of uh, um, Speeding virtual DOM because apparently it wasn't speed enough, so they, this, it will be announced soon. And like it's announced already, but I think it's not published uh, as uh, stable. So they uh, decide what uh, has higher priority, what has lower priority while rendering, so they can render your site at all. Uh, so the, sometimes they just skip things which uh, are they have no area has no power to render it, so it will no render it. That's just stupid. And uh, and also, uh, that's how ma they make a virtual DOM fast. They, they just don't run. And the uh, thing about efficiency, you apply another layer for, uh, for your computation, which is managing layer. It needs to decide what what's, uh, has uh, value, what's not. And it also has cost. It's obvious, so th that's the end of proof. Looks lacking one store. Uh, there, well, so. 2014, they, uh, I've, I've seen uh, React for the first time, and I was looking for some component-based uh, technology. I was looking for uh, the uh, this thing from Google, this material. How is it called? Polymer thing. And I was uh, I I like the Angular um, di directives because it was like components, but also a shitload of other wrong ideas. So then React was just the components, and I, I managed to um, build uh, really uh, quickly on top of that uh, good single page application. But uh, there was only a short document how to use React from Facebook. So it let me build uh, application uh, efficiently. I just broke any principle of this Flux architecture, and then it was fine. I, I even broke the virtual DOM thing. And it was great. It was really great. And we managed to rewrite our single page backbone application, which has hundreds, thousands of lines of code, uh, five years old in a month in our 10 developers team. So I think, the, and a lot of these uh, uh, things in the architecture I made in a week was uh, actually then, uh, now it's uh, the popular thing, like the one store. I said then, well, that's just stupid to have multiple store in this Flux architecture. Uh, that's why they have these problems which they are proud of uh, solving on the conferences. Like they had one uh, on the message. They, you read the message, it's still a one on the top of Facebook page. And they were just on the main stage, a lot of uh, lights, and they were proud of solving this issue. And it's like just not having multiple instances of the same data in your application. And people who never wrote the single page application, they, they, they were amazed. Whoa, I would like to write some, uh, at some point, a uh, single page application. So I will just listen to Facebook. And Facebook is a no, not good example of the single page application at all. It's slow. It's not. So also last year, they introduced immutability to the front end. So you mutate the DOM all the time. That's your, that's your goal. And you at some point you apply immutability. 
I, I was I just re figured out uh, recently on my last project that it was React Native Mobile application. Uh, so I realized my, my colleague said well, what was the issue for them. So the issue was in this uh, comparing what changed in your virtual DOM. So when they were doing this JavaScript equal 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 thing, it was the same string mutated. Uh, it was true, so the page was not uh, updated. And that's why they needed to apply immutability to the data stores, and it's so, so stupid. And they were advertising it like, now we have this feature, so we can go back in time, and you, it's so valuable for development. Actually, I never needed this. I, I'm doing well, like something's broken, I, I, my current state is broken, I go there, oh, that's broken, and I fix it. And they claim it's so useful to see what was the previous values before. To fix it. I will never needed that. But yeah, it looks uh, like looks uh, impressive. Like whole year, any kind of uh, front-end technology, which is like post-react technology, was saying, yeah, we have this traveling in time feature. Who cares? Who needs it? Who writes front-end application which needs the only use case is like you want to undo something. And how many applications you write when you uh, want to undo something, then you should apply the history pattern or the immutability for the one or two or few uh, attributes of your objects. But no, let's make everything immutable and uh, scale in the memory like Rails. Yeah, that's the consequence of uh, copying every value while the user is using your application. And then GraphQL, yeah, so when we were all um, bombarded by the REST full APIs idea, I was saying it's wrong. We should have much more well suited for our front end endpoints. But nobody cares. Now Facebook says, uh, it, it, oh, REST was a nice thing, but we have better and it's GraphQL. So what's wrong in GraphQL? Well, the good thing is like you have um, a query which, which is designed for your component. The bad thing is uh, you have it on front end. So it's also endlessly stupid. Like uh, any user can hack your application. Uh, you will limit it somehow. That's the Facebook uh, rocket science. So you will somehow limit possibilities of this query. Whereas, but still, uh, it's hackable from the from the front end. You go to the console, use this uh, React API, and and you just uh, ask for whatever you want for the backend. And if you would just move this logic of your of your query, which you need for your component, to the backend, it will serve only exact data you designed your application to serve. So it's just moving. Let's call it a string from front end to backend. This strings is our query which we need. And that's the good uh, architecture, and that's wrong architecture. Um, also, GraphQL uh, has the uh, alternative implementation, which is called Apollo. Because people just say, whoa, it's hard to use the gra this GraphQL. Let's, let's write something on top of it, and then we we'll still use the idea, but easier. And they, uh, they have the Apollo. It's uh, widely appreciated on front end. Uh, but the thing is, I watch for this my last project for this React Native application, uh, what the Apollo is on the, some fancy tutorial on the main page. And the first sentence they say, yeah, on the initializer, you just need to define interval. Yeah, yeah, it's like 10 milliseconds or 100 milliseconds by default, I don't know. Let's say 10 milliseconds, and it's just for request. And it's so endlessly stupid. Like, the, the, so they, uh, nobody cares, like, oh, yeah, so I will define the interval or, or, or leave default. but. The consequence of this is like you have some worker in your one thread environment, which is a JavaScript in the browser, which runs each 10 milliseconds to check if there were some queries, and then if there were, they batch it and send it. And also, I wrote already for this uh, project I mentioned before, the batching request, and it's a thing which you write based on events. So uh, you don't need any intervals, and it just batches when it's needed. So uh, imagine... Um, mobile application which has logic which triggers many times a second uh, for such a stupid reason and, and computes. That's another wrong thing. Uh, props checking. So they are, they think uh, that each component could, should have the uh, um, kind of testing if types are right uh, and they attach this thing. I don't know. I didn't like this. 
uh, they attach it to the bundle, uh, bundle JS thing. I think it's there. Uh, it's, uh, of course, it can be uh, dropped by a preprocessor, but nobody does it. And I, I, that's the first thing I, I also just said, oh, no, no, that's bullshit. Let, let's not use it. Uh, object decomposition. So the, the React way of uh, rendering components is like you need to decompose what you claim it was an object uh, before you had this idea. This object has these attributes. Now you decompose it each time you um, enter data to your component. Each attribute is a separate attribute of this component thing. So you, your tree, how, how data goes to the... Um, and it's one more uh, stupid thing that data goes for virtual DOM uh, to, to the destination. So you won't render to the, the data at some point, and it goes through your view layer. So you're mixing data layer with view layer, and it's needed for them because they made this mistake of virtual DOM before, so they need to compare on the component level all of these uh, attributes. So it's just need for them because they made some stupid uh, architecture and you decompose your object on the top of your application on some on the really high and then uh, each attribute which is needed somewhere there on your let's say um, user avatar um, component you pass it all the application down if you will change the structure of application it affects your data layer and it breaks and it's just endlessly stupid and also, this, you decompose this object. It's like much more work you need, to, you need to done, and you should just use this object at the right place, take it straight from the store, which is another layer of your application. And you don't mix it. And it's always there. You just take it and display it, and then it's fine. But it will no, not work with Rays without hacking, because you will just mess with virtual DOM. And then React Native, is, uh, they advertise it the stupidest way ever. So they say, now, you just write the code once, and it's pain in the ass. I just experienced it two months ago to write it. Uh, so you write code once, and it runs everywhere. So that's why 17 years ago, I was interested in uh, web applications, because I wrote them there, there, there once, and they work everywhere. And now they claim it's React Native is necessary. And uh, also, JavaScript is not slow, it's just uh, this, uh, these technologies are slow. I will show you later what's, uh, what's the right way, what's super fast, and you can write any complex application which will be good for mobile, good for everything. And you also write it once, but just in uh, technologies you have on uh, web technologies, right? No uh, native shit needed. Sorry, that was... <laughs> okay, so what's possible? So a year and a half ago, when I just made this, uh, this Piporak talk, I just thought, well, everything is so simple. I, we don't need these frameworks. Uh, I will write a framework in a week, and then I will show you how, how it's easy to write a framework. And I did it. But actually, I, maybe it's not so simple. But just uh, my perception. <laughs> so uh, this framework uh, is based on Ruby MRI, and it's, uh, we can call it low latency framework, which is like really not so common uh, way of uh, producing things. Like low latency is the thing which you can use for uh, markets, for, market, for trading, or for some super huge like Alibaba. And it's like 6,000. The Ruby party goes on my laptop like 6,000 requests per second. And it's like shitload of threads there. And it, it uses the memory. Um, how? Uh, so uh, I, that, that's that's why uh, that's why at the beginning I, I said uh, um, we should not go with this functional programming because I feel super powerful with Ruby and actually if you drop rays then it's fresh efficient it can do it can scale and Ruby MRI is not the fastest implementation of Ruby at all so there is a lot of power in in, in our hands and uh, also I used. Uh, um, hipster technology for front end. There is a guy who wrote, um, he made a fork of CoffeeScript uh, in 2009, and then he was dreaming about something as confident as Ruby uh, on, uh, on the front end, so I think he was just wanted to make Ruby a front end. But obviously, uh, um, he just changed, changed his idea on his way. Um, so each time you have some crazy idea and you start implementing, it's not like it's all wasted. You did something which has a value, and then if you have new idea, previous one, uh, which is awesome. And uh, this guy is uh, uh, 
making money from 2011, working only in his own language, in his own technology. Uh, he has full of uh, like a lot of uh, projects to do in the in the language he wrote, in technology he wrote, uh, and nobody cares about his technology. And I will show it uh, how it how it looks. 2013, before React times. Uh, Okay, so I was showing it in Odessa also on the lightning talk. So this is kind of uh, of animations, controllers, and stuff. Uh, the year is 2013, nobody heard about React. And it's also component-based technology, just that, uh, it's done the right way. And it's super easy um, to write. Uh, yeah. I will show you um, uh, uh, right afterwards. What's the what, what's the proposition of uh, Facebook for 2018? Like this React Fiber technology, they, they, their demos they are really proud of. Um, so this is uh, the application uh, for making um, fairy tales for for kids, and it's just web technology written four years ago, and we uh, we are really in trouble to make simple applications in a React sheet. I, I, I'm still uh, uh, under this bad impression of my last project. It was pain in the ass, a lot of troubles, and we needed to... Uh, this React native thing, it's, it's badly integrated between Apple, uh, Apple hardware and Android hardware. It's not like straightforward. And this works everything, everywhere, because it's... Uh, Web technology. So let's uh, let's look like 2018 React uh, demo. Okay. So this is how uh, this is how React works right now, and this is the new way. It's called fiber, so it's not rendering everything at once. So this goes like 1,7 uh, frames per second, and this goes uh, near to 60 frames per second, but it just doesn't <laughs> when it has no resources. So uh, I don't know. Are you impressed? It's next year on. So <laughs> 2018. Okay, so uh, just to check, because maybe I'm wrong, uh, and uh, I, I, this uh, technology I, I said uh, the, before and I showed you a demo, not as fast. So I quickly found this demo on the internet, copy and paste the code to, to my editor, just deleted 150 files to have 50 fine lines of code, and I have the same effect, 60 frames per second, just, just without the boilerplate code, and it doesn't stop rendering when you have no resources. Uh, that's the, the only difference. The in code and, uh, um, and better performance. Let's, let's forward. Maybe I will show something on Lightning Talk or later how the code, code looks like, uh, whatever. So, uh, there is a lot of things to do on our frameworks. Uh, we can automate everything. Uh, I don't know how much time I have. I, I would li just like to show you some part of my, uh, my technology. I showed it on in Barcelona. I also paste uh, the uh, link uh, on the description of this topic for the presentation. So I built this uh, framework a uh, year and a half ago for, for, for the talk, and it's full of new ideas, full of prototypes. I just get rid of uh, routings, of router. It's just you don't define routes. You don't define migrations. You don't, uh, your, uh, your queries and endpoints are optimized by itself. You don't write inefficient queries. Uh, uh, your uh, um, endpoints have uh, kind of, uh, now I can call it kind of GraphQL uh, way of defining, it's just much more powerful because it's uh, still a SQL query with some ORM on top of it, record. And uh, there, uh, even, uh, even real-time uh, things like you, things are changing on your, uh, on your front end uh, and you want to synchronize between clients are, 
are to automate. I didn't wrote it, but I can imagine how it could work. So your endpoints just are aware of what goes through them, and what in, when it's changed, it just sends the new values for your clients. And you don't need to write these channels when you just have some, you know, you are just filtering these messages and. Uh, it's, uh, just you, you write the same way you do in 2008, your controller looks the same, your, your view looks almost the same, and it's just real time, you just don't need to do it, it's, it's stupid to write this. Just so we can automate everything, uh, there's a lot of ideas and... Uh, how, what's the time, because I don't know if I should hurry or not. Seven minutes, okay, I can show. Okay, so let's start another topic. So what I'm saying like uh, totally, uh, this is the uh, content which, which we, you will not read on blogs, uh, you will not read on conferences, because nobody says that. And uh, the alternative is like, I remember times when I was following Angular 1 because they were claiming like, uh, technology so it will be supported and it will be best so this is the right thing to choose and the, at that time everyone was confused to what to choose and I was thinking oh that's a valid argument it's Google and then uh, in uh, having Angular 2 they, they broke every, every piece of his application they are not compatible at all between Angular 1 and Angular 2 they just refused all of these things they were claiming is like the highest the better the best ideas that exist so that's, uh, that's how my argument about trusting Google was valid. Um, also, what, what's this... Uh, uh, let's go to back to the functional programming. Uh, what's the main benefits of, of that? Because uh, maybe uh, two of you feel uh, powerful with functional programming, but I was trying to... I was... Uh, uh, on these conferences, I was convinced it's a good way to do, to do, to go, to try, and then the simplest things were really hard for me. And still, well, I, I, I'm learning programming for so many years. I'm so powerful. Why, why I, I, I need to go back and be so powerless? And uh, then I was thinking, why, why it's so, uh, why it's everywhere? Uh, on the, so I assumed it's, it's maybe it's like. Uh, uh, for, for, for who's promoting it? Like uh, it's uh, so if you think from corporation perspective, it's super valuable because your scope is limited. You can uh, you don't need to know everything about your application, and it will still work. It will be compiled, uh, pre-compiled. Everything will be checked before it go pro goes production. So you can do things which is even smaller than front end or back end. Uh, um, like if you divide things to a smaller piece, it can be even smaller and you can still deliver, and then uh, you can be easily uh, replaced you, because you have almost no knowledge about the system and it still runs. So it's super profitable to, to corporation to have such worker which is easily replaced. And um, that, was, uh, that was just my assumption. And last Barcelona talk, there was a new uh, functional language advertised by Guy. It, it's super fancy because uh, it was al algebra of types or, or something. Uh, so it's another thing which might attract uh, attracts us. And uh, he said uh, also on stage, oh, our technology became so complex, we don't know anymore what we are doing. So we need tools we, which will keep us safe. We, like in this way, we don't know what we are doing and it still works. So yeah, then, then uh, that's just stupid. We hear it so many often, like we, are, we just don't know what we are doing and we still need to deliver. And I think we should do, know what we are doing and deliver then. And then we are powerful, we can uh, do on our own uh, really valuable products, and if we work for someone, we, we have a lot of value, so we are not easily replaceable. <laughs> and uh, also, I ask after this uh, conference, because I've seen many people excited uh, on lunch, I ask, so they, oh, yeah, that's, that talk was perfect, uh, this functional programming. And I ask them, uh, so do you do functional programming? No, Java. So, so they have no idea, they are still excited about it, but they didn't touch it. Uh, they are excited just by the uh, advertisement. Just everywhere advertised, and I, I just, uh, I would like to be 
rather a hacker, like to do front end, back end, uh, organize architecture, or organize servers, and uh, everything. And then it's super efficient, and everyone does things so inefficient, and I'm so clever then. And uh, that's the example. Who knows the game? It's ro ro roller coaster tycoon from 1999. So, yeah, uh, imagine I, I just realized it uh, recently. Uh, the guy wrote and designed it by himself in 99th, and he wrote it in Assembler. Yeah. <laughs> the, the game is super complex. They have uh, internal window manager. They have uh, thousands of uh, instances of people going through the park, and you can click on them. Then you have uh, attributes of this guy. Oh, I'm happy. Oh, I'm sick. And uh, it's super complex, and it runs on uh, not powerful machine. And it was written by one guy in Assembler. So I think we are really powerful people. And we should not accept this way uh, of narration, like uh, we don't know what we are doing. We, are, we just need to investigate, and then we are re really powerful. And that's what I would like to promote with this uh, understanding driven development. I, I stole this uh, image from some open source site. So uh, I, just, uh, I will make this talk. Uh, you can just tell me how to improve it, because I think I'm boring at some point. Uh, how to improve it, and I will make it in MISC, in Leaf, uh, and somewhere else, and I will, then I will ask for contribution just to uh, meet so more things, uh, more people who would like to be hackers and who would like to discover uh, things which are not discovered by the, I don't know how to call it, mainstream technologies, uh, because they are just going to be uh, not more efficient, not, they are not for you, they are just for, for companies. They, they, that's that's the uh, angle they are they are thinking. Like Facebook, Google, they are not promoting things which are good for people or for uh, developers. So I, I would just like to go another side, like be super powerful, make everything with one line, and then boom, it works and it's super efficient. So uh, that's how people can contribute to the, such uh, projects. Uh, I, I'm I can do all by myself, but I'm just myself. I can do development, ideas, bug hunting, translations, graphics, documentation, analysis. No, I, I, apparently I, I can't because everywhere I can't advertise shit. And so, uh, if it was seven minutes, I think fine. Uh, that's, this is time for applause. <laughs> Uh, usual object-oriented programming. 
uh, also it has uh, it changes function by rendering uh, and it's just uh, thing I can't explain how to can't explain but he just uh, uh, hacked it and he figured it out it's super fast. I think I could try to explain it. It's just my guess because at some point I asked the question, what's fastest? Uh, and uh, yeah, but the, the answer is obvious. But uh, how many times faster is uh, if you uh, want to uh, have data from uh, a local variable or from global variable? So what do you think? Which is fastest? Local, yeah, of course, because yeah. if, it, if it's not local, then you check the global, right? So in JavaScript, uh, there are benchmarks, I, I found it, and it's like 100% uh, faster, just like that. So I think it's changing, uh, it renders uh, your application to the chain functions. I think it's just uh, the, the context is there, and it's not global anywhere, I don't know. That's, that, that might be also another thing which, you, which if applied to a whole uh, application, the difference is huge. Have uh, some part which is 100 percent faster each time, right? Uh, so it's super fast. It was super fast years ago, but nobody cares. Uh, yeah. uh, just a question to clarify: um, mm -hmm. the benefit of the React like frameworks uh, is the uh, productivity. Uh, what uh, what uh, the model of programming do you use if you don't use a virtual model? Uh, so you, how do you describe your company? You still, the, the syntax is uh, similar, you have just sugar syntax, it's, uh, it's shorter, it's much shorter, but, I, but as I said, this demo, I have it for you, then I can show you, so you see it's, uh, it's uh, also fast, and uh, uh, I just copy paste the React code, and then just did it many, many lines, didn't change much. So the, uh, the way of thinking about the, uh, writing your front end is the same, it's just components. Mm -hmm. But you have the syntax which supports it. You have you can tag, uh, um, tag and you uh, now write the uh, name of the tag and then you can extend real uh, DOM element. Mm -hmm. uh, super, like, you see like inheritance for DOM, it's super. Okay. Super. <laughs> More questions, please. Please. No? Okay, we'll talk later. <laughs> so, thank you.